everyone thinks lawyers are expensive, and you know, sometimes they are. But understanding the different ways lawyers charge can help you wrap your head around how much it might cost you to get a lawyer, and it might not cost as much as you think. Hi, I'm Gia from Fine Law, and today we're talking about the different ways that attorneys charge for legal services so that you can figure out the best way to afford legal representation. Retainer. Many lawyers work on retainer. This is a lump sum held in a special account that is used to pay legal fees and case expenses. Often, a retainer is based on an attorney's hourly rate times the number of hours they think your case will take. The fees and expenses for your case will be pulled out of the retainer account as the attorney works and if there's money left over, the amount left will be returned to you. One thing to be cautious of, if the retainer doesn't cover all of the expenses of the case, you'll have to pay the difference as it's not a guaranteed rate. Flat fees. Flat fees are a newer form of legal billing. The lawyer charges a flat fee to handle a fairly simple type of case she is usually familiar with, like a simple divorce or a DUI with no major injuries or extensive property damage. Because the lawyer has experience in this area, she knows well how many hours of work and what expenses will be incurred. This makes for a very close estimate, so the client knows what it will cost to get the job done. Contingency fees. This is a well-known way of charging and most common in personal injury cases. In a contingency case, the lawyer doesn't charge anything unless the client gets an award through a win at trial or a settlement with the other side. The most common amount a lawyer gets is about one-third of the award money. Courts may limit the amount a lawyer can receive as a contingency fee, and this type of charge is not permitted in criminal and most family law cases. Unbundled legal services, also called limited scope legal services. Unbundled legal services are useful if you have a limited legal problem. For instance, in a divorce, the attorney can represent you in a complex area of child custody, but you can file and serve the divorce papers and agree to splitting simple assets 50-50 if that's what's best for you. This can save a great deal of money, but still help you with the legal representation where it matters most. Unbundling is most common in family law cases and California is the state that has led the way in this practice. There are still ethical concerns about this practice, so proceed carefully with an attorney you trust and in a state that allows it. Pro bono. You might have heard this term in a TV show or a movie, and what it means is that the lawyers will work voluntarily and collect no money. In fact, the American Bar Association has an ethical rule that lawyers should put in 50 hours of pro bono work a year. This type of work is generally reserved for those who ordinarily wouldn't have access to justice due to financial hardship. Lawyers often do pro bono work in traditionally underserved communities or on issues that serve the greater social good. Other ideas. There are many other ways to save money such as DIY legal forms for simple wills and rental agreements, on-call legal advice, and legal forms like Fine Law's Answers. But now that you know more about how lawyers charge, hopefully you feel better about hiring one, if you need to. Don't be afraid to talk to a lawyer and ask upfront how much they charge and what their fee structure is. You might be surprised and find out that it will save you money in the long run to protect your legal rights from the start. I'm Gia and thanks for watching. See you next time. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. If you want to dig a little deeper, visit finelaw.com for our articles, blogs, and our weekly podcasts.